Welcome back to another episode of the Great Header Build-Off. We're here at Vibrant R&D Center. The header's done, which means we can move on to this. Exhaust time. Got my master fabricator here, California J, and we're trying to figure out how to route this exhaust system. You're thinking we'll run the resonator up in this little pocket we've got here? Yeah, we've got a 1793 Vibrant resonator. Uh, 18 inch long, two and a half inch inlet outlet. Probably gonna sit it kind of on an angle so we can follow the OEM exhaust path. Yeah. And then uh, we'll get a, that catalytic you've got there. Yeah, this is the Jezzy Cat, uh, yeah. also two and a half inch. Yep. And we're thinking to sit it up in here? Yeah, probably maybe a little bit closer, but yeah, right around there. We'll get a V-band connection up here. Yeah. Again, keep to the exhaust, uh, or the stock exhaust uh, route. Yeah. And follow back, and then we'll do another V-band connection here, and then do the tail section with the uh, cannon muffler. The cannon, the cannon is key. The T, was it TPV? TPV, TPV. that's right. Yeah, and, and, and getting the Jezzy Cat closer to the header is good as far as like lighting the sucker up and actually having it do its job early on in the combustion symphony that this car is gonna produce. And Dave, we'll, I have to commend you on the fact that you are running a cat because this technically this car doesn't need one. It's true. In Canada, anything older than 87 is not emissions tested, so I could go catless, but I hate getting out of a car smelling like gas. I've got two kids. I want them to have a planet to enjoy by the time they're an old fart like me, so uh, put a cat on your car. Which even we should, if it's old. Even if it's old, that's right. It's just the right thing to do. So... Where, where do we start, Jay? Do we start from the header and work back? Is that your process typically? Yeah, usually I always go from the front back. I'll probably do like two or three sections, stack them together, then fully weld them. And then uh, we'll just keep going in that pattern where we have like two or three parts together, fully weld them and finalize them. So that, you know, if, if you have like a, a gap here and you've mocked everything up at once and then you weld this joint here, let's say, and there's too much gap in it, then if you close that gap up uh, just from the shrink of the, the welding process, mm -hmm. you might move this exhaust back mm -hmm. here like an inch yeah. and then you might have interference. Suddenly you're against the rear axle. Yeah. yeah, so you might have, you might be, you know, really in a tight spot there. So you just yeah. take your time, do two or three pieces at a time. So Jay, a lot of times when exhausts are being connected, you see them using just like a flange with three bolts through it. The gasket, what, what's the advantage of going to the V-band setup here? Well, with the V-band you've got, uh, Ease of fabrication and quick, um, quick release or quick disassembly. Sure. If you have to service the vehicle or get it off really quickly, say you're at the track or you got a track day, you want to make most of your money, and you got to service something that's in the way of the exhaust or so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, taking a V-band connection off, especially with ours, is uh, a quick release. Oh, wow. It's one bolt that's just got to be loosened a little bit, and then it's got a quick release latch on it. Okay. Okay. So it goes together really easy. It's got a self-centering ring on it. Nice. And then putting it on again, just as easy. Slip it on like this. Anyway, it's just there. You go. A little latch like that. Right That's some there. serious fine tuning going on here. We're lined up and ready to tack, though. As you can see, Jay's added in a flex section here. This is your turbo flex section? Yeah, the reason why we put a turbo flex in out of our three main flexes that we, we offer yeah. is that, uh, first off, the engine mounts on this car are reasonably, are all brand new, aren't they? Yeah, they are brand new, Cusco okay. rubber ones. Okay, so, yeah. and they're not they're not like uh, OEM, but they're a little bit harder they're than They're hard and rubber, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and secondly, you're going to be, this is a performance car, you're also going to be taking the track, you yep. know, maybe do some drifting and that yep. sort of thing. So you're going to hit the rev limiter a lot, yep. and you're going to put a lot of heat through this thing. Yep. So uh, in order to take that extra heat capacity, we've run the turbo flex just because of the, the interlocking liner. The interlocking liner just can take a little bit more heat abuse, okay. and it won't uh, choke out like, say, a braided liner when there is excess heat in the exhaust system. Okay. So by choke out, you mean the, it actually reduces its its radius? Yeah, what we've diameter? seen happen is on performance applications when you buy a braided inner liner, yeah. is that the braid will expand and try and lengthen while it's in its 
preset length. Okay. The only way, the only place it's got to go is inward. Okay. So when it lengthens, the braid actually will shrink down and choke the exhaust out. Huh. Crazy. I've yeah. never, never heard of that. By the way, we should mention we're using two and a half inch OD tubing. Yeah, two and a half inch tubing, and all of the components that get added in between the tubing and the connections are all uh, referenced ID. So it makes it easy for you to, you know, slip things in and, and make small adjustments while you're fabricating. Right, and it's stainless, is it? Yep, 304 stainless. Since we didn't have a terrible amount of uh, ground clearance, mm -hmm. uh, I, and trying to keep things up, you know, tight somewhat to the chassis. close yeah, yeah. tight to the chassis, I went with our 1793 resonator, okay. which is a four inch round body, 18 inches long, with a two and a half inch inlet and outlet. Perfect. There's another great use of the uh, clamp. Look at that. Yeah, what that That's does is it also purge. helps keep the, the uh, keeps the clamp straight and true while you're welding it too because you've, you've sandwiched it against another surface. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. A lot of guys use a aluminum block which is good too but um, I just use tape and tin foil. So. Well it seems to do the job. Yep. So do real welders hate the expression stacking dimes? That's just something internet kids say? Um, no, I don't, I don't mind it. I mean, these, these turned out pretty good. I hope they turn out great. Usually, my, uh, my things, I say uh, those are mad tight welds. <laughs> mad tight welds. There's a, I mean, there's a, there's a balance of how fast you want to get it done compared to how, how, how nice pretty you want it to be. Yeah, yeah you know, so, but rule of thumb is the the more f the more work you do and fit up and cleaning the better off the weld's going to be and that holds true a lot of the time i can't i mean anything that i have turn out that's not ideal or up to snuff or up to my own standards is just purely because either i brushed it or i skipped a step or i mean there's a number of things so but prep prep and cleanliness go hand in hand with having a a, a great weld in the end Time to do some knitting. It's actually the world's largest pop rivet. No, it's none of those things. This is a vibrant performance exhaust hanger. Nice simple design, which you can obviously heat up and bend and do all kinds of stuff with. Yeah, I mean, they're fairly fairly easy to bend. They got, I mean, you got a ton of leverage here, even if you have to bend it up close to the uh, shoulder. Do you cold bend it or do you? I cold bend them. I've got a little long arm that I'll set up in the vise. Yeah. Uh, that, has like little dowels and everything on it and you can leverage it any at any point in the uh, uh, long section here to bend it. So we're just, at this one, um, we're, we, I've just grabbed a, a bushing that I've got in my toolbox by, by luck for you. Yeah. And I'm just gonna bend it about, oh, two and a half inches from the shoulder here. Okay. Along this uh, little uh, bend that we've got after the flex. Yep. And uh, I'll just put like, looks like a 45 degree bend on it. Okay. Jay's just setting up his medieval device here to uh, bend the hanger. It's awfully uh, big for one little small rod. Is but <laughs> leverage is king, right? I mean, I've, I've been quarter by two inch plate with this, so it'll do anything It'll you bend do. serious stuff. But the principles are the same. We just, we want leverage to yeah. bend this. There's Look at there. that. That'll work, that'll work. That looks like it's mint. So I decided to apply my advanced degree in engineering and uh, triangulate the hanger here. Jay said the <laughs> need to support it, so he put this little piece in here to support the longer part of the hanger, so it's nice and strong. So no chirping internet, we did it the right way. That's right. Well, Jay did. No he chirping. always does everything the right way. No chirping. As you can see, Jay's been busy. He put this nice little jog in the tube here, and now just a nice straight shot back to the axle. This jog was required just for better fit, I guess? Yeah, we've got a lot more real estate with the resonator uh, right here in the, just, I guess, right where your the seat floor plan, yeah, yeah. 
So we want to keep it as tight as we can to the, the bottom of the car. So, you know, we obviously you don't want to hit the exhaust on the, on the ground. Yeah. Um, so we brought the bottom of the pipe level with the bottom of the resonator. So we just knocked it up a bit, put a little jog in there, and now we're straight back to the over axle area. Nice, okay. So, and I see you've put a, a V-band connection on this upturn here? Yeah, we've got a 1490 V-band connection. Uh, we just, uh, just got that welded first, then tacked it to the end of the pipe. Look at those hats. Well, the hats didn't make me any smarter because uh, I didn't have the pan hard bar on here. For Jay, uh, who had the exhaust routing down right into the space where the pan hard bar now lives. So he's unfortunately gonna have to make a cut, shorten that tube and work around it into a bit of a tighter space, isn't it? But should still work? Yeah, we just, we're gonna bring it out on a, I guess, wider angle, yeah. closer to the uh, spare tire well. Yeah. And uh, we got a little bit of snaking to do into here to the, to the muffler, but otherwise it's going really well. We got over the, we got over the axle with lots of space. Yeah. There's a good still like three inches, even when the car is fully compressed. Yeah, so. we put it on the ground to check yeah. that and there was tons of clearance. As you can see, I've fitted up the JDM bumper here. It's a nice tight fit to the back of the car. Actually, we know from looking at pictures of the JDM bumper, which I do have, I just haven't installed that it runs pretty much straight across on this line. That's just giving Jay a, a, a visual to position the muffler with. And I'm assuming these other ones are, are uh, large They're scale new, zip ties. New drapes. New drapes. <laughs> He's gonna hold this up, a muffler up with tape. Do you think this is gonna work, Pete? Will it hold I believe it. I'm, I'm skeptical. It with good quality tape, it'll work I'm, for I'm, sure. I'm gonna stand here. Although I guess if it drops the muffler, it's on Jay's dime, not on my dime. So. Well, we're happy with the position of the muffler here. Jay's done some nice uh, tape tuning and we decided to have it on a bit of an upsweep to kind of complement the body line on the tail of the car here. If it was mounted flat, it would be hanging too low and look kind of awkward. And if we lifted the tail end up, up again, it would kind of, it just wouldn't match the body lines very well, I don't think. So we like this position. I think it flatters the overall design of the car. And, uh, it's in a reasonable spot here, I guess, as far as completing the rest of it goes. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not too bad for us to get around the panard rod and, and into this area here where we need still to still tight, it to. but we it's got tight, the best man for the job. But <laughs> <laughs> we this only moves up and down. It, it seldomly moves side to side. Just it's a little be, bit. A little yeah, bit. A little bit. It, you know, so we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be well with fire. this piece that goes over the axle is turning into a pretty complicated looking snake. What you haven't seen is all the little tune tune-ups that Jay's had to make to each of the cuts to get the fit just right and to, to fit the shape of the space that we're working with. So it's a lot of effort goes into building a custom pipe like this and uh, it's not something I could pull off on my own that's for sure. Look looking good. That. Oh, she's pretty. She is pretty. And I think that might be a wrap on this episode, PT. This gives you a pretty good look at what it takes to build a custom exhaust system. It is a lot of work and it would have taken me months to do this and it would have been an ugly mess. So thanks, Jay, for all the hard work. I do <laughs> oh, appreciate it. Oh, what are you it. talking about? It's a five minute job. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It's time for a quick little update on what the competition has been up to. This is Arts 2002 and Aaron, the other fabricator here, has been working on it on the header for this car, which 
to me is, it's cool looking, but it's, I don't know, art. It's looking a little bit like a bowl of spaghetti to me, to be honest. So we're not sure if it's really going to compete with the masterpiece Jay's made over there. As you can see, we've also done some tuning up here for you. Left you a few notes just to let you know how we feel about this car versus Connie over here, who's clearly the winner. But you know what? We're going to let you guys, the viewers, choose who the winner is of this header build-off with a poll at the end of the series. You'll be able to vote both on our channel and over on Vibrant's channel. And whoever gets the most votes will win bragging rights for, well, forever, really. Let's be honest. Jay's finished the exhaust system on our car, and Aaron, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, working on these older cars, they're small, and, and getting some clearance around some of the components here, it's pretty tight, so, yeah. If you want to hear more excuses, go over it's to a struggle. the Fiber Performance channel. You can hear him cry like a little baby as he makes this <laughs> exhaust system. Oh, wah, wah. And uh, also, don't look at the weld. I've also learned that. <laughs> Do not look directly at the weld without a mask on. I've learned at least one thing here, right, Pete? Yeah, I love looking into the weld though, so does the camera. <laughs>